Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Martin Willis, your host, and we have a great guest, uh, a timely guest, I should say, tonight, uh, Bryce Sable. Uh, Bryce has been, uh, uh, he has joined up uh, with uh, Ross Coldheart of the Need to Know. They have this show called the Need to, Need to Know. I sat in uh, Bryce's living room uh, a few years ago, and he was talking about starting this whole thing. That was a very interesting evening is a very interesting gentleman and uh i can't wait to talk to him tonight but i always like having him on the show and if you haven't seen the need to know podcast uh the link is in the show notes it's a really great uh show done i think it's every week um i do catch it it seems like every week with uh bryce sable and ross coldhart now ross has broken the big major story uh, that came out, I'm sorry, this is, uh, I'm trying to get to a graphic here and let me see if I can find it. Oh, yes. Uh, hopefully you have watched the full interview of David Grush. Uh, that is also linked in the show notes and the text of this show if you're on YouTube, but, um, I'm waiting, actually waiting for Bryce to come in. Uh, he had to reboot his computer, so he should be here, um, very soon. So I have a, I have a lot of questions to ask Bryce. You know, he did spend some time with David Grush. Uh, they went out to dinner, I believe, and uh, spent some time together. So I'm really looking forward to uh, talking to him, asking him a bunch of questions. And if you are, uh, if you are in our chat uh, and you want to ask a question, please uh, make it a good one. And let's see, I'm just trying to figure out my camera settings here while I'm waiting for Bryce. Uh, so anyway, if you have some questions, please put them in caps if they're relevant and I can ask the questions I will. I did have some people send me some questions for him. So since this whole thing broke, um, a lot, if you haven't listened to Ralph Blumenthal, he was on Friday. I did a special show with him on Friday. You can see that on our YouTube channel and our podcast feed as well. And so that was an interesting uh, interesting chat. And I'd like to find out more about what is happening uh, out there since this has broken. I, I got to tell you, I have been uh, disappointed at, uh, I'm just going to bring this up. I'm very disappointed. And when you see headlines like this right here, uh, this just came out today, the uh, New York, New Yorker, I think it is, or New York Magazine, the whistleblower is back with more crazy claims. That's the headline. That's not what we need. We don't need this type of thing to happen. Uh, but it was a very, if you haven't caught the full interview, <clears throat> he does say some pretty fantastic things, but I'm not, um, you know, I'm, I'm approaching this with an open mind. I hope, I hope you can too. Like for instance, he talks about the Vatican was in on the UFO cover up, cover up back in 1933. Supposedly there was a crash in Magenta and there that, uh, was actually housed at the Vatican. That was part of the claims. There may be massive crafts. Well, if anyone has listened to this show for any amount of time, uh, you've heard a lot of people talk about that. The size of football fields and larger, the Phoenix Lights, for instance, people that actually saw a structured craft, uh, sometimes, some of them were saying that it could be miles long, not just you know a football field, but miles wide. And when people say, to me on the show and otherwise that uh well maybe it's just like a, a black project it's and it's uh, you know a secret project that we have we're flying these things around with no sound or whatever it is i always say to them well you know if something's like a football field uh why where are they housing these things and why are they flying in the public where uh, people can see them so i don't know you know, I'm, I'm kind of uh, on the fence about it, but I don't think, I really don't think they're government. I mean, I, it just seems that we would ab absolutely know something by now. You know, I have spoken to uh, a, a friend that talks about seeing a huge, huge triangle, and that was 1977. And it floated, it made no sound, it was over her car, her aunt was there, and uh, it's an amazing story back in 1977. And if they had that technology back then, wouldn't you think that we'd know about it 
by now. Somehow, someone would leak it that, oh, we have this craft. It's the size of a football field or larger, and it it travels without using uh, any known propulsion, and it's, it's quiet, and uh, yeah, we have this craft stored away or something. You just think it would be, you know, the, the technology would be talked about by now. That's what I'm getting at. I see Bryce, but I don't see Bryce. I see a blank screen Bryce down below. I'm hoping um, I'm going to see his camera go on and all that. So he should be on. Up oh, there he is, the one and only Bryce Zabel. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Bryce. Thank Glad you, Martin. You you know, I just want to explain to everybody, um, it's been a hectic few days, as you might imagine. Yeah. But the other thing is... I've learned uh, through the podcasts that I've done with uh, Ross Coulthard, who is on the other side of the planet, that one of the things we always have to do is I can't use Safari. I have to use um, Chrome. And yeah. I also have to reboot the computer so that we're in sync. So we always start our shows by doing oh, that. Oh, yeah, you don't have sure to do that here. Sync. So yeah. I had to do that. And, you know, it takes a while. You can't hurry a computer. Anyway, my apologies. I'm here. Um, yeah. And I appreciate you having me on. Thanks so much. Yes, uh, Bryce, I was talking earlier about I had such a pleasant visit with you when I was out there a couple of years ago. And yeah. we had some some of the most amazing conversations I've had in my life were right in your living room late at night. I thought that was really fantastic. I really enjoyed it a lot. Conversations that must never, ever be put on the air, of course. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding about that. Um, yeah. You yeah. know, when you do a podcast, as you well know, almost anything that your brain thinks, your mouth can yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Especially when you're live, you got to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, one of the things I just pulled up, um, which I would, I am upset about, and uh, I'm going to just show you what, not this one in particular, but let me show you the one in particular. I just, the headline of this one is just terrible. This is the New York Magazine. And this isn't the way that I was hoping this whole thing would go. Um, and no one that's, you know, wants this to move forward, wants to see things like that. I, and, show me uh, the Did you just show the headline here? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. The I headline says, it. it says the UFO whistleblower is back with more crazy claims. New York Magazine. Wow. Yeah. N not, not nice. Well, you know? not, it, you know, nice. I've learned not to expect nice from anybody in, in media or Hollywood or, or frankly in life, you take what you get. What it, what it really is though, is ignorant. It's probably yeah. written by someone who knows very little about the topic. And if, if nothing else, it misunderstands exactly what Dave Grush is all about in the first place. He's, he's, yes, he's making claims, but he's stating that he is a highly classified uh, individual who's been working inside our government and he's telling this story and he's told it in detail with documents, with names, dates, etc., to Senate and House uh, co intelligence committees and to the inspector general of the intelligence community who described his claims as urgent and credible. I bet that's probably not in the article. I'm thinking yeah, about probably not. Uh, yeah. Probably not a lot of things like that in the article. And, you know, everything there's momentum here and I called this show the momentum, you yeah. know, of, of, and I believe there is, and I hope I'm hoping it stays in a positive, uh, momentum. And just now just released was the unclassified, uh, document of the complaint. And I have that, that's going to be in the show. I already have it in the show notes and right. you, can, you can read it there. So, uh, yeah, so that, that was, well, I actually read, I have read that about, uh, maybe a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. So no, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very exciting time. And I got to say, you know, here, when I was watching the full interview, I was thinking, well, I hope Ross really asked, you know, this, and he asked that, and you know what he did, he asked yes. anything that I could think of, and things that I couldn't think of, he, he did an excellent interview. And, and he put them to task on uh, a number of things, because it's an extraordinary claim. Absolutely. And you, you have to do that. And, you know, I, I do think we, we do need, you know, to have a, a skeptical balance. I think Mick West goes overboard. I don't want to give him any credit for anything when it comes to this. I will give him credit for some of the things. Well, he's well done. just one one thing. There's yeah. there's two words at play here. There's 
skepticism and then there's debunking. Debunking. Right. Yeah. Skepticism is something that everybody in their life should have about everything. Right. You know, yeah. we, we need in order to go about being a successful living being or a citizen, you have to have a certain amount of skepticism. But uh, there are certain people out there, and I'm not going to get into nail, you know, uh, naming everybody. But the truth of the matter is, uh, we we have so many um, people who literally are just out to make their point, as opposed to study the issue. So, right. I'm sorry to I'm sorry that happens, but I must say, both Ross and I were well aware that it was going to happen uh, on sure. this on this story because. Obviously, people are out there and and uh, people would love it. Listen, I would have loved it if uh, when I met Dave Grush, he said, and I got a piece of the spacecraft out in the trunk of my car if you want to go look at it. And by yeah. the way, uh, let me show you my phone here. I have a picture of an alien that you, by the way, you can see that Ross Coltart is calling me right now. <laughs> hey, um, Ross. So say, he's going to have to. Yeah. Coltart, you're going to have to wait. No, you, you can answer here. it if you want to. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fine. That's what live. That's what you get with a live show. You get uh, yeah. You get well, cold. You muted your phone anyway. It. That's good. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I see you have anyway, Wilson in the background. I forgot about that. I do have Wilson in the background. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. You know, a few years ago, I just uh, I, I I just thought it would be fun, and I thought, I wonder if you can get a Wilson. So just out of curiosity, I searched for Wilson volleyball. Um, from the movie on on uh, Amazon, and there it was. You can get one yourself today. I don't make any money from this, but I do love my Wilson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that was uh, that was tragic when he lost it overboard. Um, yeah. Uh, so there's some questions. Some people were nice enough to send some questions in, but of course I have you know some that I have thought of. And first of all, um, well, while we're just focusing on the negative, I want to get through that. Yeah, and sure, of course. A, another I thing today, I listen to uh, I listen to a podcast occasionally by Sam Harris, and uh, today I was very disappointed to hear him say that you know the internet is a place with wild conspiracies. Says now we even have aliens that land here, and it was like ah. Uh, so really? another thing, here's a scientist again not looking into it at all, just seeing it on the surface and discounting it right away. That's that's what I see in this situation. And unfortunately, that's what we're going to see in a lot of situations out there with people. Uh, you know, for instance, I was on on a deck uh, at a lake the other day with my sister and her um, daughters, my nieces. And I started talking about this and they started like giving me that look, you know, it's yeah. crazy Uncle Marty, you oh, know, yeah. type of look. So, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, Marty, <laughs> Martin, I, I call that... Uh, for years, I've been saying, I, I on this this subject, I'm I've often been treated as the drunk uncle at the wedding. So you've just yeah. invoked that, and and it still happens, not as yeah. often. Um, I do in, in in addition to having people who will still treat me as the drunk uncle, I do have a whole growing amount of friends who literally will see something. Uh, well, I think the thing that's ironic is they'll see an article that of course I've read because I'm like you, I have to stay up on all this stuff yeah. as if I'd never seen or heard of it. You know, by the way, I thought you might want to see, you know, I, and uh, I'm getting that too from friends but, like but on the, the outside. But the nice thing is yeah. they send it because they say, I want to know what you think about it. So yeah. at least there's yeah. a uh, growing curiosity that uh, is, is yeah. coming around this. And, and among a lot of people who pay attention, there's an increasing awareness that, yes, yeah, something very, very real is indeed happening here. Right. And uh, by the way, I love your podcast. I gave it a plug when we first started. It's you did. Thank moment. you. I'm very grateful. Thanks again. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a great one. You guys just have it. You know, you have what it takes. And, and uh, uh, you know, Ross does such a wonderful job on his end. It's really great. Uh, so, I'll tell I guess him you said that when I call the man back. <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, when did you I'll first hear uh, Dave, David Grush's name? Uh, how do you pronounce it? It's No, when did you first hear it? When did I? Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? It is funny. I do hear a lot of people calling him David Grush. Uh, it's yeah. Grush. Uh, and it's spelled uh, G-R-U-S-C-H, not G-R-U-S-H. So now you know. David Grush. Yeah. 
With and it rhymes with brush with a G. With a yeah, G. With so a, when did I first yeah. hear about David Grush? That's actually um, not a completely simple question. Um, Ross and I have been doing Need to Know for um, something like 18 months now. And we're pretty close. We talk often. Um, we um, share information. And I knew and do know about many of the people that he's talked to. And uh, I've been... He, he has not spoken only to to um, David Grush, by the way. He's talked to many people over that time period that I've known him, and then, of course, before that. Uh, so I've been hearing the rumbles of what Grush represents without specifically knowing it was a man named David Grush. Um, that changed uh, fairly recently. And uh, then, so that I, I heard about it th through Ross sort of, briefing me about his investigations as I tell him what I'm up to. Um, what he was up to there was very, very important, obviously. Um, he came out to Los Angeles uh, to interview David Grush on camera, and uh, a, a deal had been struck to uh, have News Nation shoot it, which, by the way, answers people's question, why can't I see all the raw tape right now? Well, because News Nation shot it, not us, and they control the first bite of that apple. Now, interestingly enough, though, uh, that was May 9th. So on May 9th, in a North Hollywood warehouse, uh, Ross Coltart sat down with uh, David Grush, about three to five cameras by my count. They spent two hours doing the lighting. They set it up beautifully. And as you saw, it was wonderfully recorded. The day mm -hmm. before that, May 8th, um, I met David Grush in person for the first time. And literally, the man came to my house, all right? And we recorded what we call the safety interview. Um, let me explain. We were concerned of two things, uh, that possibly on May 9th, uh, David might have changed his mind or gotten pressured or whatever yeah. and decided not to do it, period. Um, or we were concerned that we showed up at that North Hollywood warehouse and were met by agents of some institution telling us that the interview was not going to happen. So for for protection, we recorded uh, another interview with David Grush that was sort of just, a, like I said, a, a safety. Put that one away in case something happens to the News Nation one. So um, we actually interviewed Dave Grush twice, uh, once on the 8th, kind of informally. Um, my son actually shot that, who is a, a, a film director. Yeah, I met him. He yeah. shot it. And you met him. I think yeah. you met my son. Yeah. Um, his film is is done. And I said, and I knew he had the equipment. I said, get over here right away. So he came <laughs> over and we we recorded it on the spur of the moment. And then of course May 9th was the was the big one. That's kind of a long answer to when did I first uh, hear about David Grush, but that's kind of how it went down. Yeah. And uh, you know, there's a question already in chat about the Las Vegas thing. And I think that's a, I had a long conversation today with a. Uh, Ben Hansen, and part of that was about that, which, you know, it seems like it's shaping up to be a hoax. Um, so, but nobody, you know, it's not, I want to keep an open mind about it, um, but it, it looks like that's probably most likely a hoax, unfortunately. Well, I, it's, it certainly, un unfortunately, is correct. I, I Part of the, look, there will be hoaxes or there may be anomalous events that uh, need more investigation, and possibly this is one of those, but I think the problem, and it's not really a problem, it's just unfortunate, as you said. It's unfortunate that it happened at the same time the Grush interview was um, yes. airing because news organizations tended to go, oh, great, we're going to talk about UFOs and aliens. Boom. They yeah. go into the same pot and they get conflated. So I, I thought that was unfortunate in the same way, yes. by the way, that the um, uh, Stephen Greer uh, uh uh, it, uh, uh, the Stephen Greer event at the National Press Club that took place the day Yesterday. after the Rush yeah. interview aired. You know, that's unfortunate timing. Uh, Ross and I didn't pick that timing. News Nation decided when they thought that the the full finished product should air. Um, and and uh, obviously it aired uh, the day before the, the Greer thing. But it's unfortunate because all of those stories could could stand breathing on their own. It would be nice if if Grush was taken for exactly what he was and debated 
without the other external stuff. And it would be nice, frankly, I'm sure uh, Stephen Greer would say the same thing. He probably would have wished in an ideal world that what he was saying would be taken at its own uh, value in the moment. But that's not the way the world works. Yeah, People are going to say there's aliens crashing in Las Vegas at the same time the Grush interview is airing, at the same time the Greer thing is happening. That's... Um, on one level, it's unfortunate, as we said, but on the other level, it shows there are people talking about this topic. So right. that's yeah, I want to I want to sort of tease something a little bit here, but I have to be careful. And that is um, this whole story has. Uh, well, I'll, I should backtrack a little bit. About three years ago, I was contacted um, by someone that said he had a friend in the military that actually came upon something, a situation. And, you know, he does not want to talk about it. Well, because of what Dave Grush has done, has made him feel like this is the right time. Beautiful. So that's what we're hoping more of these type of things will happen. I'm going to on, meet. On, with on the other hand, um, it can also work the other way. Uh, somebody who's thinking of talking sees how Grush is being treated and says, "I don't want any part of that." Uh, one of the uh, mm. uh, one of the Good things point. that Ross and I have become aware of, and I I don't want to speak about this beyond the the general at this point, but there certainly are other whistleblowers. There are other people yes. with other stories from inside the government who have taken advantage of the National Defense Authorization Act passing with all that language protecting whistleblowers who have in fact brought their stories forward, who have told them to the uh, uh, intelligence community inspector general, who have in many cases told them to Congress. And in, a, in allusion to what you just said, um, some of those people were literally waiting to see how Dave Grush got treated. Did he get dismissed? Did he get embraced? And mm. I, you know, I guess I would argue sure. it's about what we could expect. He was both dismissed and embraced. It yeah, well, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how things progress sure. you know, after they have the hearing. Something I don't think is, is uh, talked about enough, and I would like to really focus on this one phrase, and that is, if he indeed was lying about this whole thing under oath, he could spend up to five years in prison. Absolutely. So that's a very, I think that's a powerful statement that has Absolutely. not been said enough. You well, know? clearly, um, well, look, having spent the time I, I did with Dave Grush, I can tell you my own personal opinion is yeah. that guy ain't lying. I mean, he he's telling a story that he experienced. Now you could say, well, maybe he didn't really experience it. Maybe, maybe they're gaslighting him or maybe he's mentally deranged or whatever. Well, those are a lot of maybes, but one thing I will tell you is that his story, his credentials check out perfectly. And yeah. you don't have to take my opinion. Nobody's that. arguing that. Yeah. Every, everybody that looked at his story uh, agreed that his credentials were solid and that continues to be uh, true. So what happens then is the, uh, if you're a debunker, you can't say, oh, well, you know, that thing that you saw in that video, that wasn't really uh, anomalous. That was a, a, a jet aircraft and whatever. Well, with Dave Grush, it's different. You can't say, oh, people misperceived that. The only thing yeah. you can say about Grush is you have to either, I've, I've heard debate uh, debunkers do this, they either say he's lying or that a lot of people around him lied in this great internal um conspiracy to lie to send him out there and a lot of people go well of course it's a psyop i have a hard time exactly getting my brain around what would be the purpose of a psyop to send this heavily credentialed guy out there to talk about these things uh if you're trying to cover it up what is what is happening there why would that be advantageous and i i don't see it but that's that's my opinion others it would have to be such an organized disinformation situation to be able to do that with so many different variables and the different people that he's spoken with. I mean, it would have to be very, very involved and very sophisticated if that's the case. That's what I keep going back to. I have a question for you. Sure. Does Eric Davis have any connection to this whole thing coming out? To the best of my knowledge, no. Okay. I don't, I don't know that he yeah. did or didn't. I have not spoken about Dave Grush in a context of Eric Davis to anybody ever. So okay. that's all I know. All right. Um, that That's good to know. I, I was wondering about that. And, um, you know, when he, 
if he went directly to Arrow, uh, would he be able to, like, just say, for instance, does Kirkpatrick have a high enough clearance that he could talk about everything? Are, are you aware of what level of uh, clearance that Kirkpatrick has as far as what he can be, uh, you know, what type of information sure. he can be shared? Well, I mean, I should state up front, I'm not an expert on government classification um, policy about what, who can say what to whom. However, um, it doesn't strike me as uh, realistic that uh, I, he, let me roll back again. Yeah. Ask that question again, because I want to get my brain around this thing. What um, were you, just, you were saying. Yeah. Did Kirkpatrick have a high oh, enough clearance? Did, did Kirk so All right. Could, like, well, I mean, he's heading the he, arrow. Uh, Kirkpatrick does not have, I think it's called Title 50. I don't think he had it. And I think uh, Sean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, David Grush does. However, that doesn't mean that Kirkpatrick can't hear from people tell their stories. I mean, maybe he's not classified enough to see a document or a photo or a video of some kind. I don't know. But yeah. his the fact that you do or don't have a classification probably doesn't prevent you from hearing somebody else tell their story to you. Hmm. They're not he Dave Grush telling his story to Arrow is what is supposed to be happening. Uh now I do think it's pretty clear that when the DOD put out their response to Grush, they basically said, well, I don't think Arrow knows anything about this. But in fact, that's different than saying the Department of Defense doesn't know anything about this because Arrow may not know by design. I mean, I think this story um, is going to grow. And I think some of these, these are what I call the secondary and tertiary questions that are going to come in the aftermath of what Grush has said, and I welcome them. This is what the journalistic community should be doing right now. They should be saying, okay, that was interesting. Loved hearing the Colt Hart interview. Uh, loved reading what uh, Kane and Blumenthal had to say. Um, and now let's look into the details ourselves a little bit further because it's a great story. And so I, I, I think that some of that is happening. As you mentioned earlier, there may be some... Um, journalistic debunking going on too, because the truth is journalists are even worse than the average member of the public when it comes to um, having conflicted opinions about how to think about the issue of UFO UAP reality. Because I, I, the, the closest explanation I can say is that having been in journalism for many years uh, before I went to work in Hollywood, um, you know, journalists don't want to appear silly. They want to keep their cred, right? And if they're not sure what their own audience thinks about the UFO UAP issue, then they are going to be less likely to want to push it. Journalists tend to follow what's on the public mind and not lead it. That's not 100%, but on this issue in particular, I think history is pretty clear on that front. You know, I, I when I was talking to Ben Hansen today, uh, it, this whole situation kind of reminded me of something, and that is back in 2017. It was October. Tom DeLong had his sure. special Lou Elizondo talk. I watched the live stream. Then the next day happened, and I'm thinking, why isn't everybody talking about this? This is major. And right. then it came out in the New York Times, December uh, 16th, I believe. And all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. Right. And uh, this story is bigger. And well, it certainly is. If it's if it's true, uh, yeah. it, it dwarfs the December uh, 2017 story that the New York Times printed. But part of it um, that I've noticed in just being a part of the coverage and observing the coverage and being inside it um, is that a lot of people and and. Well, let me just back up. For those of you who were lucky enough to find how to watch News Nation and you watched Ross's uh, one hour special, there was one hour after it. And the anchor man, uh, Brian Enton, who I think is a, a good anchor man, uh, but 
he's not an expert on the UFO UAP issue yet. I think he's about to become one. But even on his first day of coverage, when he appeared on the Elizabeth Vargas show, he was saying, you know, I, I really don't know much about this topic. I'm coming into it fresh as if, you know, mm -hmm. this is a pretty big topic, as all of your listeners and viewers know. You don't just figure it out, you know, uh, overnight. You've, it, it takes some you know, getting up to speed. And then I noticed in that show after the special that Ross did, he said three times, you know, uh, as if he was trying to explain why this couldn't be possible or people would think it's possible. He would just say, it's just too much. You know, basically it's like, it's more than I expected. And I, I think uh, what some people have hit upon is that we were just getting used to, well, there are some things flying around that are yeah. anomalous, that our yeah. government agrees to. Okay, that okay, they're but they're not saying they're alien yet, but they're saying we don't make them, and they're saying the Chinese and the Russians probably don't make them. So who is that? Who wh who's left? And I think people's heads are getting acclimated to that space. Now along comes Grush and says, forget about that. <laughs> that, that, that that's that's elementary school let yeah. me take you to college Child's play yeah yeah so now he gives the college course on this thing and says <laughs> you know you have to ask yourself folks if there are things flying around in the sky who's flying them who's piloting them who's making them and um if they you know are what what is what does the government know about that and to his credit, Dave Crush is a guy who actually did get to know what the government was thinking about it. And what he he saw was so compelling to him that he felt as a patriotic American, uh, since the government had had 90 years with this secret, it was uh, probably acceptable to take a grave personal risk to his freedom and his own safety to try to bring this to, to people. So when people just you know, uh, make it so personal about him. I, I just, I, that is the only part that bothers me. I think it's completely reasonable to say, I want to see more proof. But the question is, who's supposed to provide that proof? David Grush? Well, listen, David Grush was lucky to get the Pentagon based on their rules to allow him to speak about certain things, right? But they, do you think that the Pentagon allowed him to take that piece of aircraft or spacecraft and put it in his yeah. car? Did the Pentagon give him a photo of an alien? No. So he, he didn't get to walk out and have that to show all of us. Now, do those things exist? I believe they do. And I believe that Grush has not only spoken to Congress about it, uh, but potentially delivered these items through different uh, methodologies to uh, these committees, or at least some of them. So things are about to get interesting because Again, the he, he has sort of called the bluff. He said, you created a whistleblower act. I'm a whistleblower. Here's what I know. And now it's up to Congress to investigate it. So right now people are. Whoops. Your mic just went off, I think. Hold on. Your mic's off. Well, now it's on. There. Okay. It was yeah. on such a roll and now my mic is off. Damn. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I, I mean, uh, <laughs> okay. The if they were to have public hearings right now, and I believe they're going to in July yes. or August, yeah. I don't believe that you can look at those hearings as likely to be the blockbuster that would naturally come because f for Grush's statements to be checked out, people are going to be checking those out behind the scenes before they're having a public hearing about them. I think, at least that's my thought. Yeah. I mean, it seems to reason that other people will come forward in the same manner, especially people involved, or are they in too deep? You know, that's, that's the, the mystery. Yeah. You know, I mean, are they going to, you know, are they going to be protected by what they, you know, even if they handled the things themselves? Well, um, that's why a lot of people are watching how Grush is treated. But look, you and I know, and so does probably 95% of the people who are listening or viewing this right now, that there's a there there when it comes to UA, UFO, UAP reality. Yep. So that means 
that if Grush is correct, uh, it's been massive and sustained. But even if he's not correct, it means something is still going on. Uh, and and I, I guess I would say if something has been going on for as long as it has and has been likely as well funded as it has, they have definitely put some of their money into how to keep this secret secret because it can be done. As Grush himself said, he said, well, you know, Ross asked him about that and Grush seemed to say, well, you know, um, I know a lot of things that nobody else knows and nobody's going to know and nobody has found out in all this time. So, yes, yeah, secrets can be kept. Yes. Um, before I move on, I just had forgot to mention the great blog that uh, Charles Lear did uh, this week on our website. Did Einstein inspect a crash mm. UFO and aliens from Roswell? There's just a lot going. Uh, it was like current news out there and sure. um, he tackled it. Um, and also, I, I do have to say that uh, Palmer, who helps out a lot with this show, gave some pretty good questions here. But I want to know how uh, David is, um, Grush is doing right now. How is he doing right now? What is it like being him after all this? I think he's fine, but I'm not going to go beyond that. That's his own personal life, and I, I want to respect the boundaries that he has. Obviously, he's he's um, it's no secret that he must be talking to other people about who he's going to tell this story to, but I don't sense that he's in a rush to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, but not beyond that, I'm, be, I'm just going to let that play out. I don't think you're going to see him do a giant tour of the podcast universe in the same way that Lou <laughs> Elizondo did. And, yeah. I, and I don't know that either of them is right or wrong for the choices they've made. Um, I just, I, I think it's fluid and that's all I can really comment yeah. about that. I think, um, I, th I, th I hope he, whatever it is, he uses great caution and takes advice from someone like you or Ross, you know, or Ralph or Leslie and you know, what, what yeah. is next? It's funny. I, I wouldn't presume to give Dave advice, uh, myself, but you know, I do think, I, th I, I can't remember when I first uh, was thinking about this. I thought, well, if anybody should get on the phone with him, it should be Lou Elizondo because, you know, Lou probably knows better than most what he's about to go through. I think he commented on him the other day. I think I saw something on Twitter. Probably. I know so, they know each other, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this uh, 23 minute video that's ambiguous video that Lou, speaking of him, mentioned Oh, well over a year ago that we should be seeing. Right. Um, have you heard anything about that at all? That that's I've always wondered what happened to that because usually when Lou would say something, something would happen, and uh, it's supposed to be a very good and interesting, uh, like profound, uh, with multiple crafts and things like that. Twenty three yeah. minutes long. I have heard. Um, I be I've heard enough to believe it's true. Uh, I have not seen it. I don't actually know anyone who has seen it. Um, and I don't know what's going to happen with it. Uh, it would, it sounds as described though, that it's the ultimate game changer. You show it to, if you showed it to a room of people, you'd have a room of people who said, yeah, that's not ours. So yeah. I, all I can say is I hope the time will come sooner than later where we all get to be in that room. And do you know, I don't know how deeply, Anyone spoke to Dave about certain things like this? This is a question from Palmer. He said, did Dave Grush have access to complete sense of data for the Tic Tac video and other two clips? Um, you know, I, mean, I don't know if you even. Well, I want to just be, I, listen, I just want to be careful uh, in, 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 I don't want to, it's such an important situation. I don't want to extend the argument with hearsay of my own, but I, uh -huh. it, Yep. My, I believe that the answer to your question, if I'm rolling through my own memory tapes, is, um, and again, let me let me hear your question specifically again, so I answer it. Uh, did uh, he have any access to data oh, um, the, for the Tic Tac? I, I I believe that is an affirmative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that I think that he had portfolio and classifications necessary to ask pretty much anybody about anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I asked uh, Ralph the other day uh, uh, questions, and um, I guess I, I, I guess I'm going to ask you the same question. <laughs> and uh, 
I'll, when, I, I don't know if I'll give you yeah. the same answer, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, for this whole thing, I'm going to start out with a negative. Uh, what do you consider would be the worst case scenario out of this whole thing? Well, I mean, ob the obvious worst case scenario, I mean, the worst, worst, worst case scenario is that he was completely conned and it's the greatest example of a, you know, of a hit job that, that anybody's ever seen. I don't believe that is the, is the case. A bad scenario would be, he's exactly who he says he is. It might even be that every word he said is completely true, but that for whatever reason, uh, the media, society, the political institutions, the scientific institutions yeah. are not ready to accept it. And it kind of gets rolled back and put under that rock again. To yeah, me, like, that's, the, yeah. that's the most likely bad scenario. But I don't yeah. think that's going to happen either. I just think it's, you know, for people that were hoping, and I, listen, I have hoped like everybody else. I was hoping, well, I'd like this to be the dividing line. You know, remember Richard Dolan and I wrote a book, AD After Disclosure, right. where we yeah. were saying there was all of history up to this point, And then after that point, it's AD, it's After Disclosure. That kind of goes to how you view disclosure. Uh, to use a Hollywood metaphor, is it a slow dissolve or a hard cut? I was thinking Grush might usher in a hard cut, but I don't think that based on how I saw the media handle this story and even people and even people in the UFO community. So I don't think it's going to be a hard cut. It's clearly not. But I think it is a valid and important and critical moment on the slow dissolve toward openness. Yeah, yeah. My uh, girlfriend has said something funny the other day. She like told her brother, you know, the whole thing. And she was really excited telling him and everything. And he goes, you know, he basically has the attitude. Well, yeah, well, what's for dinner? You know, that, there's a lot. I, 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 you know, that used to frustrate me more than it does now. I'm, I'm giving myself permission not to freak out over it because the truth is people do what they're the best that they're capable of doing. Look, I have, um, I have three kids. Um, and I don't think one of them has read AD after disclosure. Um, I have three kids. I don't think one of them yet has seen the full one hour interview that Ross did. And, you know, their dad's been working on it for, for quite a while. And, and it, and they know it's super important, not only to me, but that I've been saying, look, this is, this is a big freaking deal. And yet they've, they haven't watched it, even though, you know, they, they will, if, if, if uh, pushed, they'll say, well, no, no, I, I don't think my dad's misled. I think he's telling the truth as he sees it. And I just don't think about it very much. And they don't, they're involved with their lives. You know, they yeah. have mortgages, they have yeah. uh, friends, they have uh, parties to go to, they have life. And at this point, they don't see this issue as something that should um, impact their, their lives. Now, people like us, and again, the people who are watching us, we've already sort of fallen off that one and we it is impacting our lives. And that's why you and I are talking to each other right now because we're all concerned about it. And and the, the thing is, if we're right and they're not, then what's going to happen is that eventually everybody on the planet is going to say, oh, yeah, uh, we're not alone. Now, it may very well be. I, if you were to ask me right now, do you think that they, whoever they are, the people in charge, have a plan? I would have told you five years ago, yes, they have a plan and it's all part of, you know, maybe they're going to roll this out and and. Maybe this is the slow roll. And I, I'm not so sure anybody got a good plan together. I think there's divisions of opinion within um, the community. I'm not talking about the UFO, UAP community. I'm talking about people within government and industry and aerospace and science who have been involved in it. I think there is a division of opinion of, about what to do about it. And what may end up happening, and this happens Rarely, but it often ha it can happen where um, something good happens without a plan and not by design. And we may be in that situation right now where ultimately um, maybe a slow roll has been 
good. I don't know, but we seem to be in it right now. And maybe it will turn out later that, that actually when the, when the words actually come from officialdom, uh, we are not alone. People will say to themselves, yeah, I know that. I mean, we, we knew that years ago, right? Because if that's what, how the information is ultimately received, then that's like probably a good outcome I mean, yeah. as opposed to people taking to the streets and, you know, burning buildings. Yeah. I, I guess I'd rather that they thought, yeah, yeah, well, we are, of course I know we're not alone. I mean, that, that's a better outcome. You know, uh, I, I can't expect people to, to think and feel the way I do, but I feel as though it would be the biggest story of all time. Of course. You know, this and- is why it's frustrating, Martin, when you tell <laughs> when you start talking about this with somebody and and you are aware that it, it that it, it that it a it's quite likely true. And B, if if A is true, then B means it's the biggest story of all time. I mean, you know, I'm a trained journalist. I, I got a degree in broadcast journalism from the University of Oregon. I mean, by every criteria that I was taught uh in my journalistic training, this is the biggest story of all time because it hits all the top ones. One of the things I remember in particular, I had a, one professor who said, it's the job of the media to answer one central question. Uh, are we safe? Right. Mm-hmm. And if you apply that to the 11 o'clock news, um, you, that's the first thing that the news answers. So if there's a fire in Indianapolis and I live in Los Angeles, it doesn't lead. But if I'm in Los Angeles and there's a fire in Los Angeles, that leads, right? Because they're answering to the audience, are you safe? Well, in the case of UAP UFO reality, uh, it affects the entire world. There is no local jurisdiction. Either we're safe or we're not safe. And therefore, it ought to be worthy of valid and, and continuing investigation which is where I hope we are soon to be. Yes. Um, speaking of safe and not safe, one of the comments during the interview was that there were possibly some that weren't safe. Yes. And uh, that that wasn't, uh, I, I think Ross said something, now you got me scared or something like that. Well, you know, listen, you're talking to the guy. Remember, I created the NBC series Dark Skies. And yeah. the log line of the series was, uh, they're here, they're hostile, and powerful people don't want you to know. So hmm. if I had to amend that at all, I might say they're here. Some of them might be hostile and powerful people don't want you to know. Because uh, if you listen to Grush, he he has confirmed multiple non-human intelligences. It's not just a singular one. And... Um, he has made it clear that some of them, I don't think he's saying they're overtly hostile, you know, like it's not Independence Day, they're going to come blow up the, the White House and subjugate the world. It doesn't appear, but that some of their interactions with us lead to fatalities and um, they may not treat us any better than we treat a chicken. You know, we, 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 don't, we don't really know. Right. Somebody right. might know. I'm just saying somebody might know. I personally don't know. I've had people yeah. tell me different things. And as a citizen of this country and a citizen of the world, I think I should know, just like I think you should know and everyone who's watching should know. We should know if we're safe. And if right. we're not safe, yeah. uh, we should know that. Yeah. I mean, that's just logic. Yeah. You know, one of the, I'm sure you heard this a million times, maybe not a million, maybe half a million, but- you know, uh, and Mick West, Mick West had something running on, on Twitter the other night, and I, I commented to it, basically, that we don't know what we don't know type of thing. But he said, okay, so we've been flying for, you know, just over 100 years, um, and they supposedly, to get here, had to be, you know, flying for whatever, and and yet they crash. What do you mean they crash? You know, so, so- that... That's what you hear a lot when you're talking about how could they be crashed forward to, I'll, I'll, I'm looking forward to debating Mick, Mick West at some <laughs> point because, first of all, I'm sort of tired of that. There's so many different ways to look at that. But one of them in particular is the craft that are flying and crashing may not be 
craft that have traveled across the universe to get here. Okay. In this any more than if we crash an F-18 in the Iraqi desert, that it flew all the way from the United States. It may very well be that these giant craft that people keep seeing are the equivalent of ocean liners or, or uh, battleships that have traveled across distances to get here, but that some of these smaller craft are in fact doing whatever, you know, again, I, I'm not going to ascribe what they're doing here exactly, but whatever they're doing, they're not the ones that cross the universe. Or if you listen to the Dave Grush interview, he went on at length about why he wouldn't call them aliens and uh, he wasn't going to ascribe where they come from. And he talked about the physics of, um, you know, there being other other ways to, for example, to coexist in our space but out of our time or in our space, but in another dimension or whatever. So yeah, maybe a craft is traveling from there to here and it's a different kind of problem, or maybe they're crashing them as gifts. I don't know why they're crashing, but we have, we have a pretty successful um, airline situation in the world, but things crash. Things that are engineered sometimes don't work, or potentially some of the things that are that that we do, um, like there was there were rumors initially that our radar actually crashed a few of these things, which seems yeah. unlikely. I was going to I was just going to say that. Yeah. yeah, that that's one of the things I've heard for years. You know, the speculation that it could be radar, which could be very primitive to them and unexpected. Uh, you know, yeah, that type of situation. But you know, also. Um, a person that contacted me uh, through someone else was saying that uh, there's possible shoot downs. Yes. Oh, well, that's a whole, that's a, that's a whole separate thing. I don't think, um, even though I will say this uh, in the second episode of dark skies, that was our explanation for Roswell that we shot it down. Now I don't personally believe that it was uh, more of a, of a, uh, dramatic and uh, uh, attempt to uh, create a television series uh, that that featured uh, Roswell in it, um, but I do think Roswell was a true event, and I do think that some of them seem to have been shot down. Dave Grush again seemed to imply, um, well, not imply, he seemed to say that that had happened. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Listen, I want to say goodbye to everyone over at KGRA. We're going to, if it's all right with you, we'll talk a little bit longer because I have a lot of questions sure. up here. Absolutely. Great. And uh, so um, I, I guess I'm going to post, uh, pop this one up right here. I had something in mind to ask you. What the heck was it? Sorry, I get I, so many distractions here behind I'll the scenes. I'll throw theme. one thing in. For yeah. those of you, I, you know, I, I, I don't do a good enough job of this, so I'm going to do it. If you uh, have heard about the podcast I do with uh, Ross Coltart, um, that's at need to know dot today. And also we have a YouTube channel where we've, you know, I've been trying to curate, um, Martin, I've been trying to curate all the incredible content that's sort of, it's like a, you know, a fire hose of content that's coming out. So I've been, uh, curating some of that content on our YouTube page, which is also called need to know. Yeah. And that's all in the show notes, everyone. So I know what I was going to say. Uh, okay. Palmer had written this, but I didn't post it up, so I don't have it in front of me. But something along the lines where you were, when you were filming Dark Sky, Dark Skies, sure. that you were visited by someone from the possibly from the government. Yes. And he wanted you to elaborate on that. If since we you just mentioned Dark Skies, yes, uh, we don't have to spend much time on it. But something well, happened with you. It's definitely worth a lot of time. Um, okay. I am writing a book that will include it. Um, yeah. The uh, working title of the book is "On the Trail of the Saucers." Currently, uh, what ha I, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not going to scoop myself, and I also don't have two hours to explain it all <laughs> on your show right now. But the highlight is uh, two things happened during Dark Skies. On the night of our premiere party, um, with 200 people who were studio executives, uh, network executives, uh, uh, actors, people that worked on our production, the writers, directors. Um, all the uh, cast and crew, basically. We had a party at my house, okay? So now my house is becoming, <laughs> I don't know what to say about this, but at my house, I'm hosting 200 people for a premiere party, uh, which was, I believe, September 26th of 96. And um, no one had seen Dark Skies at this point, of course, because 
it hadn't aired yet. That doesn't mean no one had seen it. I mean, obviously we had cut it and so forth. But we all have little badges, little majestic badges, because Dark Skies took place inside Majestic 12. Uh, that was sort of the organization. And so everybody who attended the party got a cute little Majestic 12 badge. But there was one guy that showed up at the party that didn't have a badge because he wasn't on the list. And uh, one of my producers said, you got to go talk to this guy. And there was a guy there who um, said he was there. Um, he... I believe at that party stated he was from the office of Naval intelligence and that they thought we did a really good job with the show. And, uh, they thought we might want some help in order to get more things right. Huh? To which I thought, well, yeah, this is bullshit, man. What are you, what are you doing? You're breaking into my house. Get, get out of here. But I said to him kind of being a wise ass, uh, because he said we, we'd seen it and we like it. And I said, oh, yeah, well, OK, you're so smart. What happens after Lone Guard sees the crop circle? And the guy said, oh, well, they take him back to Majestic 12 and they do the ART and the blah, blah. blah. And he, yeah, I mean, he absolutely had seen the show. So there was that. Oh, now, wow. other things happened and that'll all be in the book. But what happened after that is that um, we went on about our lives. Because remember, just because the show was airing, I was still in the middle of production and production on a television series of the scope and scale of dark skies was just insane. And of course I had, I'm married and I had three kids and, you know, that were really young and, and, you know, it was just a lot. And the network really didn't care whether I was talking to O and I or not, they cared whether I got the show in on time and on budget. So a week mm -hmm. or so pass. And uh, this guy calls my partner and uh, says, your, your, your partner, meaning me, doesn't appear very convinced. You know, I wonder if he wants to meet my boss. So this guy showed up at the Dark Skies offices, which I allowed to happen simply because we had security there. I thought, you know, we have show security. So, OK, let him bring a guy. And Brent, my co-creator uh, on Dark Skies, and I spent two hours with uh, this guy that came to the party and the guy that he said was his boss two guys that did not look like, you know, goofballs. They looked like Navy SEALs in terms of, you know, how they presented themselves and everything. And they proceeded to brief us, if you will, uh, on things as they supposedly were. And, and, um, and they said some things, frankly, that I heard again from Dave Grush. So I heard oh. those back in, in, in 96, I'm going to be delineating that a little clearer when I, get to writing about it. But at the same time, I threw them out of the office eventually. Cause I said, I said, I I've got a show to produce. You've got to leave. Yeah. And, um, wow. and, and then, and then now I'll wrap the story up and uh, because, you know, obviously I'm shorthanding everything, but after the, the two guys left, they called my partner, the, the guy that crashed my party the first time called my partner, Brent. And he said, you know, your partner really is a skeptic. You know, uh, he seems to need a little more convincing. And Brent huh? allowed us how that was probably true. And they proposed meeting the, I believe it was an admiral, but it could have been whoever was in charge of a ship that was in the Long Beach Harbor, okay, that we were to go to Long Beach. And and this part, I say this and people always go, oh, come on, that's crazy. But all I can tell you is this is what happened. Um, the guy said that we were to meet this guy at a cemetery in Long Beach at midnight. <laughs> and I said at that Beautiful. time, yeah. I have three children. I am meeting yeah. nobody at a cemetery <laughs> in Long Beach at midnight. And, that, and that's the last I ever heard of those guys. Wow. Boy, that is something. Now, wow. I got to say one thing that's funny about that is Brent and I for years have always sort of laughed about it and said, interesting, because a great TV show would be the two guys that go to the cemetery in <laughs> yeah. Long Beach at midnight. Yeah. <laughs> because I don't know yeah. what would have happened. Either I'd have ended up dead or they'd have given me a piece of the Roswell crash. I don't know. But it was yeah. a risk I wasn't prepared to take. Yeah, you could have made that one of the episodes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Here's I'm going to post a couple of questions. 
um, and I don't even know if you were told any of this sure. or if any of it could be even shared. How serious were the threats made toward Grush for going public? Or or is that is that what the threats weren't really because he was going public? It's just that he was uh, proposing I don't think to that question below? states the situation quite quite accurately. He was um, he pushed for openness, as I understand it, and uh, actions of retribution took place against him, including having his house broken into, as I understand it. Hmm. And he then filed that complaint because he had been, uh, you know, his uh, his complaint of, of retribution. He filed that with the intelligence community inspector general who listened to him, interviewed other witnesses, et cetera. And at the end of that concluded as he forwarded Grush's case to the House and Senate Intelligence Committees, the IGIC, as that person is called, forwarded it and said that that what Grush was saying was urgent and credible. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I, I don't believe anybody. I mean, I think people were threatening. I, I think things happened because he was talking. But I, to say that he was. Um, you know, sort of threatened or attacked for going or if he went public. I don't think he was talking about going public with anybody. I don't think mm -hmm. that was the plan until after he started meeting and then he filed the paperwork that would allow him to talk. And people say, well, why would the government allow him to talk about anything? It's crazy. Well, the one, the only, as I understand it again, and I am not the world's expert on this kind of policy, but as I understand it, um, if the government would have shut him down and said, you can't talk to anybody about anything, then he has a right to appeal that. And that's a public appeal. So the, the net effect would have been the same thing. I Only see. It would have looked like the government was trying to stop him from doing it. It's the same thing that Lou Elizondo has had to go through, frankly, for his book. Okay. Yes. Lou can say what he wants to say in his book, but he has to submit it for, um, to, to be looked at by the defense department. Sure. To see if there's anything classified in there. And, you know, the question I had asked Ralph Blumenthal the other night was, I mean, it seems to me that if we do have these crashed vehicles, off-world vehicles, seems like that would be the highest classification you could possibly have. Yeah. And, you know, what, what do you, and how come they're letting him talk about that? You know, well, because again, um, look at the reaction. He's talking about it, and a whole bunch of people are going, "Oh, it's a psyop," and a whole bunch of people are saying, "I won't believe anything until I see proof." You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, and frankly, had he come out with proof of a of a of a craft, uh, what would people have said then? Some of them would have said, "Oh, well, you know, you can Photoshop anything." So yeah. I, I, I'm just not, yeah, yeah. you know, I, no, I'm not a hundred percent. He went through the channels to do it right. So he did. Uh, According to the new legislation, he followed yeah. those rules. He got an attorney who was yeah. uh, well versed on those rules and and he he went through the process. Yeah. And the attorney was just for the process. People are saying, Oh, you're misled, it had nothing to do with the UFOs. No one ever said it had anything to do with having an attorney for the UFOs. It had to do with the process. Well, and there's also some uh, confusion that the law firm that represented him, I think, has broken their association. But his lawyer hasn't. He's still got the same lawyer. Right. And, uh, I, you know, I yeah. look at that. I've had like seven lawyers in my career. Right. I think I fired a couple and I think they fired me, too. And, you know, lawyers come and go. That's just at least in my business. That's what happens. So um, yeah. I. Yeah. His lawyer is still with him and law firms have a different way to look at things. You know, the, I can see a law firm saying we don't want all our other clients in this law firm to be sucked into the UFO issue. Uh, and that would be perfectly yeah. legitimate on the law firm's part. I don't actually, uh, you know, I can't be quoted as a fact bearer on this thing. I haven't talked to any of these lawyers and I, I don't know for sure, but I'm if I, I don't think it, it is as nefarious or undermining as it has been portrayed by some people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so right away on Monday morning, when the story broke last week, uh, not even an hour later, 
my girlfriend was looking through the internet and comments and things. And right away, someone says, oh, this guy's just looking for a book deal. I mean, uh, not a book deal, a movie deal. So I want to, I'll, I'm going to post this question because I want to address the thoughts that people are having out there. So Bryce, have you secured rights to a screenplay for the David Grush story? And that's not even on your, not even on your mind, I bet. I mean, this has nothing to do with well, no. I mean, listen. I'm a I'm a multi hyphenate here. I'm a writer. I'm a director. I'm a yeah. producer. I'm a journalist. Right. Okay. It's so, a fair question. Yeah. Then. I mean, yeah. I, I I I would love to write uh, the screenplay that is the Dave Grush story. The problem I have right now is I'm a lifetime member of the Writers Guild of America, and I'm on strike. So uh, <laughs> on a technical level. Um, I'm not allowed to go make that deal with Dave Grush. I'd be happy to make it. I would make it tomorrow. Um, if he were listening okay. now and sent me a text saying, let's you know, make a deal when the strike is over, I'd be happy. But that I have not spoken to him about it. And I don't know if anyone else has. I, but know I don't, that a, I don't think a, that, I mean, uh, Ralph had the idea that there was no such thoughts. Uh, he didn't get any of those type of thoughts. From well, no, no, I, I never got any of those kind of thoughts. I'm just from him, but you know, it's my job to have those kind of thoughts, right? I have, I, I have Don yeah. uh, Schmidt's book, Witness to Roswell under option. I have Stanton Friedman's book, Top Secret Magic under option. I have uh, Stan Friedman and Kathy Martin's book, Captured under option. Yeah, so I remember I'd be that more one. than happy yeah. to be the, uh, the person to spend time with Dave and, and figure out what the dramatic way to tell his story is. Uh, and I don't see anything wrong with that. And first of all, I will tell you that even if a movie gets made about him, um, he may not participate in it in a direct way. And even if he did, he may not, you know, people are not, people who license their rights for films don't get rich. I mean, and people who write books about UFOs don't get rich. I'm writing a yeah, book right. about UFOs <clears throat> because I've lived an interesting life. And I've had things like what happened at Dark Skies happen to me. I've had things like meeting Dave Grush and, and getting him interviewed at my house happen to me. I feel like that's a book that's worthy of, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> that's, oh. that's a story worth telling. I don't expect yeah. to make much money from it, if any, but, uh, but I, like, I like to write, so I'll, I'll write it. And by the way, one of the reasons I'm working on it right now is I'm on strike and I'm allowed to write a book. I'm not allowed to write a screenplay. <laughs> How about that? Okay, so I'm going to ask some, I'm going to pop up some questions in chat. Brett always has good questions. Has there been any reaction from foreign countries that you know about? Well, I think you guys um, all know as well as I do that, yes, people all over the world are commenting about this. Just go on the internet, look around, you'll see that people are, are talking about it. Uh, the only thing I know, and I'm not going to be specific about it, but there are uh, conversations going on from you know, foreign uh, entities that would like to broadcast or stream or otherwise show the interview that Ross did with him in their own countries. Um, I don't think that's letting any cat out of the bag. I mean, of course, this is one of the more incredible stories ever told. And unlike the Bob Lazar story, where Bob told his story and people couldn't nail down who he was exactly. And, you know, there were some flags on that play. Uh, there are none from that point of view on Dave Grush. So um, so because of that, people all over the world would like to know more. People, you know, the United States is not the only place that cares about this issue. Uh, in fact, that people all over the world care about it and uh, they they want answers too. And, and uh, I look forward to a time when the world joins in partnership uh, to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, yeah, I, I sure hope so. I'm looking for a specific question that um, a friend of mine po says he posted, but I didn't see it, but he sent me the text and it says, uh, let's see, who brought Grush to, do you know who brought them Grush to Keen and Blumenthal? Did someone actually, uh, was, some, was there an intermediary involved? That would ask me to comment on... Um how Leslie and Ralph did their business. And I, I don't actually know the answer to that. Okay. I do yeah. know that Ralph and Leslie and Ross were it from my, my distant observation, all sort of chasing the same story 
at roughly the same time. But if you'd asked me, I would have said uh, Ross was there first. I know, for example, that Ross, like I said, uh, brought Grush to Los Angeles for these interviews on May 8th and 9th. And you can do the math. The debrief article aired, I mean, you know, was printed much later. But that doesn't mean when they knew him, uh, you know, that's a R Ralph and Leslie and Ross and Dave and other people would have to get their calendars out to figure that answer out. And, and that's nothing I know about. Yeah, we're, we're, was everyone afraid of getting scooped on this? You know, I mean, uh, I'm sure that uh, Dave would be right up front with, you know, like someone, uh, Wolf Blitzer called me or something like that. No, you, you know, know? what? I, I don't think so. Uh, as I, again, I'm, I'm, uh, the people who were there in meetings are the ones that are the primary sources. I'm, I'm a secondary here, but um, my, my understanding was that um, Dave Grush himself felt that the way he wanted his story to get out was a big print drop first, followed by Ross's interview. So he gave Ross an exclusive interview and, and I believe gave Ralph and, and Leslie some version of, of an exclusive interview for print. And Dave all along thought it was going to be the New York Times or the Washington Post, which ultimately turned out yeah. not to be the place. Then it went to The Hill and Politico. And for their own reasons, they also did not choose to go forward with it. And that's how it ended up at the debrief. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm hoping that more mainstream media runs with this. I mean, that's what we need more of the ball rolling on this thing. Well, I, I can't I give believe. you the um, the specifics because they're not sitting in front of me, and it's not mine to tell. But uh, I'm I, I'm very clear that the uh, ratings for News Nation exceeded what they normally get. I should long. hope so. Yeah, <laughs> I should. Have, so I would. I would. I'm yeah. hopeful. Um, I I th I thought News Nation did a, a pretty fair job with this thing. I was on a couple of times. Talked to Chris Cuomo once. Talked to Elizabeth. Not Elizabeth, um, Laura Ingram, Asha, and I also oh, talked yeah. to Laura Ingram. On but Fox, I'm talking yeah. about News Nation. I thought News right. Nation yeah. Um, yeah. understood that they had an incredible story and treated it um, as such, and uh, and added a lot of external uh, information uh, and and did it well, uh, as and at least didn't run from it. They ran into it, and this is what it's going to take. And so I'm I'm grateful that they did that. I hope they continue, and I believe they will continue to follow this story. And uh, I guess the message to the rest of the media is like, come on in, the water's fine. Let's do this together. Right, right. Another uh, question was asked: Did Grush ever talk about the nature of their propulsion system? Do you happen to know that? I don't. Yeah. I and think he probably did. Um, yeah, I, I'm blanking on on it right now. I don't. I don't have any specific memory now. All right. For is there anything that you can think of, Bryce, that you'd like to clear the air on on some of the things that are being said out there that are, you know, are misleading that you can think of right off the top of your head? Well, one thing I'm just seeing someone who said, "Wait." Chris Cuomo was wasn't having any of this the first night the story was given to him. That person is correct. Um, they are not incorrect in saying that. Chris Cuomo, even we, when he was at CNN, I recall seeing him doing a handoff with Don Lemon between shows, and there was a UAP story, and they both seemed to not take it seriously. And it made me angry. I remember yeah. recording it, and I was going to do a big, I think I mentioned it even on a Need to Know podcast. But I will say this. When I did an interview with Chris Cuomo, it was about five minutes long. It's up on our Need to Know uh, YouTube site, so you can see for yourself. I thought he had pivoted considerably. Oh. He, he wasn't saying, yeah. oh, I'm a believer, because who's asking him to believe? Nobody. Yeah. I think what, but what he did say was he seemed kind of ticked off that if the government has been withholding information, whether it's about aliens or some kind of black program or whatever that's gone on this long, he seemed really in favor of getting to the bottom of it, which I found also interesting because when I talked with Laura Ingram on Fox, you know, these two people are not on the same 
side of the political spectrum to the best of my knowledge, but she had the same point of view or hers was, well, this has gone on long enough. Let's get to the bottom of it. Yeah. And, and I think if we could just all agree with that, instead yeah. of uh, picking everybody apart right now, what we should say is this deserves more information, more investigation, and there's no time like the present. Let's get started. Did Grush want it to be in big print like the New York Times or something like that just to get it, make the big impact? Is that what he was looking for? I don't know if he was looking for impact. He was looking for um, the ability to say, I've been vetted by, you know, the Wash when it was the Washington Post most of the time that yeah, it looked like it was going to go with. And I think he was thinking to himself, look, Washington Post broke Watergate. If they uh, take this story and they check my sources and they check my statements about my uh, bio and resume, uh, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good for mm -hmm. the story. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think he was... You know, I, I didn't see a guy that had stars in his eyes about, oh, boy, this will be great. I think he was just saying, look, this is a major story I'm laying on people. And yeah. it, it needs to be done in a way where people are ready to perceive the information. So a nice print article that goes into the not only the statements, but also his credentials at length is a greater mm -hmm. is a better way in his brain to start it because it, it answers a lot of those questions. And then when people wanted to see more, he thought it would be good to sit down with a investigative journalist who's as competent and credentialed and award-winning as Ross Coulthard and sit with him for hours and, and take any question he wants to ask. And he yeah. did exactly that. And while no rollout is ever perfect, I thought it was pretty good. You know, he, uh, he answered like he lobbed back an answer to Ross and Ross said, I'm going to hold you to this. I, I love that, right. that he really pushed him on a question. Well, you know, you know well, there's one other thing, Martin. I see someone else saying, hey, it's pretty simple. Go and look. I, I agree with that. Let's remember one thing. Dave Grush has gone to the House and Senate Intelligence Committees and the, the Inspector General. And to the best of my knowledge, he has provided names, dates, programs, and locations. All right. So what is the solution here? Well, it is pretty darn simple. Go and look. Yeah. These right. committees yeah. have investigators. They know how to subpoena material. They've done this before. You know, the yeah. it, 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 they should go look. They if yeah. they have to rate it, go rate it. Uh, yeah. If they have to, if they can uh, file the right paperwork to get in, do that. But you know, uh, the, the ball is is well. Look, this this secret's coming out no matter what anyway. But yeah. it would certainly urge it along to see Congress get deeply involved in taking the information that Dave Grush has provided, plus these other whistleblowers that are behind him, and say, okay, well, we've heard a lot of specifics here. We have investigators. Let's go look. That's yeah. my policy, and I, that should be their policy. Right, right. Uh, I'm not familiar with this, are you? Uh, Tim is writing... Uh, what are your thoughts on the House reps who said they were shown craft in Florida recently? Are you familiar with that? I am not up on that story. Yeah, I have not heard anything about that. It would be interesting to know more if that person wouldn't mind uh, throwing a link in. Um, let's you know, it's funny about it, though. Uh, I, I'm not sure that that's uh, uh, true, but I'd be I'd be really curious if somebody is alleging that. The last time anybody claimed to have craft shown to them in Florida was Jackie Gleason, who said right. Richard Nixon took him. A story yeah. I might point out that I've never 100% bought into. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. However, yeah. stories like that become more credible as we establish that the phenomena is real. And as we start to hear whistleblowers come forward about it, it makes certain stories things that you have to take a second look at, whether it be Jackie Gleason and Richard Nixon going to, what, Homestead Air Force Base, or whether it's Bob Lazar, or whether it's Betty and Barney Hill, right? Yeah. Or whether it's Roswell. And by the way, Grush says, without question, Roswell, yes. Uh, oh, that definitely that? was an anomalous event, something that I've felt for years, now, decades now, but I'm re I'm speaking at Roswell, frankly, in a couple of weeks, and I couldn't I couldn't have a better gift to sort oh, of yeah. 
you know, make this speech uh, something I really am looking forward to give than to have someone of uh, Grush's abilities say that it happened. Right. I had thought about going then, but there's a con conflict. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't see you there. Um, so um, Shane wants to know any word and when we'll see the full seven hours okay. of interviews. I really want to break this down because I, what, what I don't want is for people to think, oh, people are holding things back. I, yeah. I, I get it. I, I understand it. And I really want to address it. So here, here goes. Yeah. The seven hour thing I have to take credit for, I think I must have tossed that off on uh, on need to know. And sometimes when you're lying, <laughs> you know, you know, as well as I do, you know, words just come out. And then later you're like, I didn't say that as artfully as I wanted to. You must have that happen. I, I certainly do. I'm, I'm a human being. I make mistakes. Yep. So let me just clarify, backing up to the 35,000 feet, Dave Grush comes to Los Angeles. We shoot a safety interview with him at my house right? In my head, it was a long time. I think it, we, he was certainly at the house for four hours or so, maybe more. I don't know if that the camera was turned on the entire time, but it was a long time. Then the next day, he goes to the North Hollywood location and shoots the full News Nation interview. And in my head, that is about three and a half hours cameras were rolling. But now two points. Point one, the thing that took place on the 8th and the thing that took place on the 9th are roughly the same interview, right? oh, working yeah. from the same notes. Mm -hmm. So even though there are moments where he may have articulated what he was saying differently than other times, there's really one interview. So now we're let's talk about as if there's just three hours of tape rolling. OK, sure. yeah. people who have seen interviews with tape rolling also will understand in that three plus hours there were stops and starts. There were moments where the camera guy's going, I got to change, uh, you know, I got to do something or the lighting guy is that light went out or let's go have lunch or, you know, there's just things that happen during that thing. And then there's also repetition and there's, there's things. So out of that three hours, uh, I don't know, but there's less than three hours of actual content. So what has aired so far in my view, having listened to both of those interviews, um, the revelations, if you will, that are in the one-hour News Nation show pretty well hit the highlights. Okay, now, if you were to see the entire uncut interview, uh, there might be a little a, a little bit of amplification or you'd have more time to study his face. Is he? I'm not saying you shouldn't see that, but... It's also not as simple as, well, hey, why are you guys holding it back? Why don't you just put it out there? Well, again, News Nation, um, in order to provide the platform to get it out there and to provide the money to shoot it appropriately, um, has the rights to deal with the, the video. I'm not privy to that deal, but obviously they get first bite of the apple and they've, they've taken it with the promos followed by the show. And um, I believe negotiate, not negotiations, I believe conversations are being had um, to figure out what is the proper platform to at least edit together the sort of the, the I guess I'm going to call it the director's cut or whatever, you know, the, the, the part with all the, that shows all the stuff that wouldn't make it into a network cut. And I think people are looking into doing that. So it's a process. And um, and again, I'm not in charge of the process. Um, I didn't make any of these deals. There, it's not my uh, it's not my tape. I guess I technically. Be, well, I guess if New, News Nation owns the tape of their interview because they put up the money and shot it, I probably own the first one because my son shot it and I paid him. So, you know, maybe, yeah. but I, but that one looks a little more like a hostage video and it's, it's, it, you know, it's not adding, I'm, I'm going to review all of it. I'm in the, yeah. my son and I are in the process of reviewing that first tape, uh, yeah. which takes a while because first you have to look at the news nation tape. And now I'm looking at the first tape and I'm trying Very, to see, yeah. are there contradictions or anything that deserves to be, talked about. Yeah. And uh, I can't do that overnight. I'm doing it as best I can. And uh, also, uh, I don't want to undermine the people who were nice enough to shoot the News Nation tape in the first place.
Yeah. That's I my long the, story. Yeah. The uh, biggest complaint I'm hearing out there, and just to get it out, uh, people are saying, why don't we have, you know, the documents? Why don't we have the direct evidence? I mean, do you think we can look forward to the possibility of seeing, do you think there'll be transparency eventually if, if well, it sure. comes to that? Sure. But I mean, again, Dave Grush didn't get to leave with documents and photos. You right. know, when he walked out of the Pentagon on bad terms, basically, they're not loading him up with suitcases and hard drives. That's not how it works. Now, but do you think it will he lead will be able to, it. to go to these these yeah. Senate uh, to the Senate, the House, and the Inspector General because they do have the classification? Right. Mm. And he was able in some way, shape or form to turn them on to documents and, and other evidence. And it will be up to the people in our nation who who make the decisions about classification, which is a hot topic right now, to decide what of that can or cannot be class uh, declassified into a public hearing. But it's not up to Ross Coltart or Leslie Kane or Ralph Blumenthal. And it's not even up to Dave Grush. I mean, yeah. he's done what he's done the best a guy in his position can do. And I, yeah. my, uh, my admiration for his courage and his guts and his essential patriotism remains undiminished at this time. You know, I, the one thing I'm worried about is the umbrella of national security and that, you know, we may not ever get to know more. I'm worried about that, but I mean, no sense worrying it. It's either going to happen or it's not as far as uh, we're going to know or, or not know. This is a, a question that uh, a lot of people have. Uh, there were some other people asking the same thing. Do you believe more witnesses will step forward, especially direct witnesses? Yes. By the way, I see something here, and I, um, power of one says too much about making money rather than getting the evidence. I, I'm sorry you feel that way. I, I really am. I don't I, see anybody making a ton of money off anything. It takes money to shoot things and to platform them. And uh, I don't see anybody making a lot of money. I see people who care about this topic doing the best they can under difficult circumstances. And, um, and that's how I see it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Well, I want to, Bryce, I want to thank you so much. It's been uh, another wonderful conversations we've had many and uh, it's been really enjoyable and the show again the need to know uh, the YouTube channel everything is is down below in the text and or in the show notes and check out it's a great show I try not to miss them and uh, really enjoy what you and Ross are, are doing together well we enjoy your show and and again just like the guys who said they were from ONI and just like Dave Grush you've been to my house so there yes. you go. That's right. You made, you right. made the it's cut. A, it's a beautiful place. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, right. thank you. Listen, yeah. thanks so much for the interview. Yeah. Thank you to all of you for your great comments. I really appreciate it. And we're each learning a little bit more all the time. And, and uh, I look forward to uh, getting the answers. So thanks again. Yes. Very good. Take care. All right, everyone. So I don't know why I'm not back here. There it is. Uh, so I'm back next week with Richard Sauter. Now I, I had Glenn Richardson was scheduled for this week, but I thought it, it was too important and that could happen again, depending if I get another very important, um, you know, guest for next week. So far I have scheduled uh, Richard Sauter. He should be on next week. And I want to thank everyone uh, for watching and listening and remember to keep your eyes to the sky. <laughs>